everybody. Let's play some No Man's Sky. Well, it's another hot one on Fireball here, so I think I should probably continue with my objective in the Doctor's Dirigible. And I have decided for the purposes of unlocking some more stuff in the game to make just getting around more fun, I am going to seek answers among the stars by at least leaving the atmosphere of the initial planet here. So, we're going to do something right now that is probably one of my favorite or at least one of the most unique experiences in all of gaming, which is just, I'm in a starship that I can get to drive around this huge, procedurally created um, world, and then yet, at any point in my ship, if I like, I can simply take off and leave the planet. I can soar through the clouds and through the atmosphere and into space. And I can look down at the planet from above. I mean, look at the etched surface of this planet. I'm above the clouds. And I can then fly even higher and be in the blackness of space just like that. Actually, I must be in some kind of interesting nebula type area because it's very, very gaseous. It's, it's like this kind of light blue color in the space around here. All right, well, we'll figure it out. Now, they're telling me that, that I've achieved orbital flight, which I have. There's the planet fireball below me. And now, in space, you can start to see how many other planets are in the system. Now, one thing I want to do is um, I want to go into my log. And let's see, discoveries. All right. So I am in the Fanato X system. And what I'd like to do is actually rename this. Um, something related to our persona. Incompetentia. And to make it this, I am also going to probably need to in com pe tentia. Not to be confused with incontinentia. All right. Beautiful. And so we get the clusters. And um, this system, when you're out here, it tells you it's got five planets and a moon. Um... All right, terrific. So we can test our pulse engine by holding L1 and R1. And you engage pulse drive, which is kind of like light speed, I guess, or whatever, warp drive. And then we're getting an incoming message, and we can use our communicator to see who's talking to us. Incoming transmission. Source number 4925B. Please identify yourself. I'm... Cause, I, um, I'm me. You are not m m alone. I keep hearing this. Follow the static. The, the broadcast ends as strangely as it began. 
The final piece of the signal appears to be a set of planetary coordinates input to data. And it's telling me that we've received some data and you can move your ship to orient to where this is telling me to go and here um, on Fireball, the planet that we in fact discovered what's that area? Is that where I wonder why it's glowing like that? Anyway, there is a signal source and first of all, that planet looks awesome from space. You'd have no idea that it was on fire and scorching. And what you then can do which is so cool, because this game is just so freaking large, is you can get your ship to be aimed at the signal source there. And then you can hold down L1 and L2, or L1 and R1, to turn on your, like, warp drive or whatever. And with that in your sights, you will go as fast as possible over the surface of the planet, rotating around the, the orbit of the planet to the other side of it and then once you get close enough to the planet you can no longer use your warp drive because of planetary interference and now you're just kind of driving straight at this thing I'm gonna rotate myself and you get the other part of the coolest thing in gaming with starships which is entering a planet from atmosphere and here we are there's no load time really it's just like you know you just emerge here. It's sensational. Okay. And so I'm going to land my ship. I used a bunch of fuel doing this. So I'm probably going to need to get some more. And let's get out. Alright. So this is a new area for me. So there's a new place for me to chart. Um, and receive coordinates. Oh, oh, what is, there's, okay, there is a knowledge stone. I'm going to hold square to tag it. Once you tag something in your, when you're using your analysis visor, if you tag any of these little, um, icons that are showing up, then once your analysis visor is off, it'll show it to you so you can get there easier. Anyway, I'm going to save and chart this area, get some information about this low gap flats as it has been randomly called open the box see if there's anything cool inside get rid of this rusted metal and there's some navigation data what's in here dehydrogen jelly all good stuff Ooh, uh, projectile ammunition Let's go ahead and interact with this, which is where the signal was taking us, and see what's going on here. The sparking wires of a machine generate a signal, tapping out its broadcast into the void. Whoever left the message is long gone. Decipher the signal. Decoding. 16, 16, 16. There's lots of 16s going on here. No fuel in failed to reach station. Hazard protection low. No choice but to underground. Deployed base computer. Now we're talking. As well as the log entry, the signal contains plans for a base computer and a terrain manipulator. Awesome. This is why you want to progress the story because you get these fundamental technologies that just make the game more fun, give you more things to do. With any luck, the base computer will hold, hold more information about whoever is leaving these messages. Extract the plans. All right. So, the base computer allows you, it says here, when placed, contact Universal Car uh, Cartographic Archive to establish ownership of land. So you can, like, kind of claim, like, a little territory for yourself. Successful registration allows the construction of base modules across any site of the user's choosing. So this is what you need to build your base and create like a house for yourself. And it's just such an awesome, fun part. Base building was one of the original like big updates for the game. It was not, when I first started playing, it was not a thing, but it's so much fun. Um, 
This is another thing that was not initially in the game and is so awesome. The Terrain Manipulator. Advanced terraforming device. This module overloads existing multi-tool systems, allowing the user to reshape regions as they wish, charged with metallic elements. Okay, so I need carbon nanotubes and dehydrogen jelly to get this. Anyway, um, I'm going to definitely go ahead and proceed with this quest called Habitation Program. Select terrain uh, manipulation manipulation mission in the log so we push options and we go over to our log and we have this secondary mission we can now select and it's for the construction of the terrain manipulator by default the terrain manipulator will destroy the ground when fired use the quick menu to change the advanced editing mode and establish construction options so basically you can use this terrain manipulator to either dig tunnels or build stone seemingly out of nothing that you can use to make a cave for yourself to live in to hide from the harsh environment and receive um protection from the elements uh you can just build cool arches designs whatever you want it's just such an interesting feature that they added uh and it's great all right so we need to make it by or install it all right, with um, dehydrogen jelly and carbon nanotubes. Well, we've got that stuff in spades. So, um, if I want to do uh, base computer requires a mine substance copper, and you need to install the terrain manipulator. Yes. Yeah, so also, if you want to get raw metal out of the environment, you need the terrain manipulator. Okay. So. Yeah, we have to have it. Not a big surprise. So let us install technology. Now, one thing we want to install right away is the bolt caster. This is what I was looking for before, which is this lets us shoot and use the um, multi-tool as a weapon. And then we also want to in install um, the terrain manipulator. We don't have enough slots on this. Oh, no, we do. We have enough slots for... Um, every piece of this, but I'm going to install this and we can put in part of it and then we just need carbon nanotubes. So let me go into my little inventory and start crafting carbon nanotubes. And can I build another one? I can. Now I have no more carbon, but I have just enough to go to my multi-tool and finish the ter uh, terrain manipulator. So we just install the technology by using our two carbon nanotubes, which are just 50 carbon each. And if you're ever looking for carbon, just use your multi-tool on some plants. All right. Yeah, I love this, that there's like classes for each, you know, you're, there's classes for ships, there's classes for multi-tools. The little doctor is not great right now but we can certainly upgrade it. Um, oh, I don't have any... There we go. Awesome. Now I can use triangle to switch between the mining beam and the terrain manipulator. All right. And so what you can do then is... If I mine right now, you'll see that I just blast a hole using the terrain manipulator. And I can just dig, you know, like a tunnel down underground if I want. Or I can switch this, and when you push circle to switch, it goes from a minus sign to a plus sign. And now check this out. I can make this huge. And now this giant ball, um, boom, I can just make... A giant ball and I can hold this and just build something if I want I can rotate the plane um, you know and you have more nuanced options right but I could just build an archway for example so now I've just made this coming out of the ground and if I wanted I could also 
um, change the material and, you know, make it like underwater or cave or whatever. And I can change the shape. I can make squares or circles. And let's just put some squares here on the pack. Um, I think I'm running out of material to make things. Oh no, I just... I couldn't make any more of that type of thing. I, I believe. Uh, okay, now, check this out. I've made this archway with this wall on the back. And if I go inside this little area that I've made, see the temperature level stabilized. So it's kind of like a, a makeshift rough and ready way when you're away from your base or your ship to make a little place for yourself to recover your environmental protection. Just a cool thing that you can do. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to my mining beam and um, that knowledge stone is far away. So instead, I need to gather copper. Uh, so let me use this and look for copper. Copper, that's phosphorus, phosphorus. Um, there's copper. And now I've tagged that. And see, you can only have one thing tagged at a time. So it took away my um, knowledge stone that I had tagged, but that's fine. And the copper is actually pretty far away. It's 624 units away. So I'm actually gonna use my ship to go travel to that. Let me see about crafting some fuel for my ship. Um, I need dehydrogen and metal plating. Well, metal plating is usually not that hard, but I need some ferrite dust and I need some dehydrogen. Let me scan for, there's hydrogen. Like I said, most of the time, places where you'd want to land your ship, there's usually just hydrogen around. So I'm just gonna pick this stuff up. get a bunch of this stuff. Bust up these crystals. Let me try to remember something. If I use the terrain manipulator like right here and burn a hole um, in... Nah, it's not letting me... Yeah. I was wondering if I could just blow up the environment to, like, mass harvest these things, but you can't do it that way. Alright, anyway. I can now, um... craft... I think I have enough dehydrogen. What I need is ferrite dust, so we can just get it from these rocks. Oh, these are unidentified. Scan them, get us some money. Boom. Lose a night. Sure. Ferrite dust coming in. See how I'm getting some phosphorus sometimes? That's because it's a secondary element um, that's within the luzonite there. So sometimes you get phosphorus. All right, now I have enough ferrite dust to craft the metal plating. And then I can make myself some starship fuel. What am I missing? I'm missing some dehydrogen. I'd like to make some more. I always like to have enough fuel for my ship. I hate um, 
not being able to get around when I want to. The bigger the, the cr crystal concentrations, the more you'll get out of them, by the way. Uh, so let me go into my bag, and now I can just hold down square and craft another one. All right, perfect. Let me get my ship now. Do the power jump move. And let's get in the dirigible takeoff here. You can see we're down to 50% already. But the copper deposit is over here. Much easier to get to by just taking our ship over here. All right. Now I'm going to touch down right next to it. Auto land, by the way, is awesome. Okay. Now here, this big exposed hunk of ore is called a resource deposit, and it has copper, and it requires the terrain manipulator. So all you have to do is push triangle to switch over to your terrain manipulator, and make sure you're on the mining option and not the create option, and then just blast this stuff. Um, flatten, restore, or mine. Hmm. I don't know how I got to that. Oh, flatten. Huh. I didn't know there was four options now. Wow, those must be new. Anyway, you just basically use the mining tool on this to blast the copper like you would with the multi-tool when harvesting resources. But the really, really cool thing about the terrain manipulator is that it doesn't overheat like the multi-tool does when you're mining. And the mining laser overheats, rather. It's still from the multi-tool. But you can just hold this down as long as you have enough energy to power it. And it doesn't even take that much. So you just kind of blast wherever you see the shiny copper. And then once the copper starts wearing out, you can see the, the rocky landscape underneath. That's an indicator that, you know, you're not getting copper anymore. You're just blasting away the environment. But there's a lot of copper here. And I want to get a bunch. Okay. And we also got a bunch of silicate powder from the ground. So now we have enough um, copper to create chromatic metal, which is like an extremely... Um, I'm going to get this oxygen. It's an extremely important resource. You're going to need chromatic metal like all the time when you're building anything for your base. Okay, so here's my ship. Now I need the portable refiner. So you have to push down and go over to... Um, do, 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 do. Where is it? Gestures? No, no, no. I'm sorry. You push up. There you go. Portable refiner. And I'm just going to put it here. And I'm going to use it. It needs fuel. So we can charge it. We don't really have that much fuel, unfortunately. I might have to go get some more for this. And then I'm going to put the copper in here. You can just um, push down or up on the control pad to switch between your inventory pages. And then pick up the copper, drop it into the input, and it will take 41 seconds to process 114 of it. So I'm just going to tell it to start, but I don't know if it's going to actually finish with just 8 copper. So while it's doing its thing, I'm going to um, get some more copper from these magnifying lens trees. Actually, screw that. I'm going to get it from uh, this exploding dude. I don't like if the environmental plants. It, it gives you oxygen, that's right. Well, it's not like oxygen is a bad thing. Alright. Radon? Oh my, I don't know if I want that. Beautiful. I don't think I've ever seen radon in the game before. Oh my god, what is that explosion? What is that? 
Oh my god. What is going on? Is that one of those worms? Is that a sandworm? I saw those in the preview for Origins. What the... In God's name was that? I'm terrified. Was that like seismic activity? Or was that a sandworm just burrowing through the environment? Um, either way, that's another reminder that I am not building my base on this planet. It's way too hostile. These, like, cubes that you see here, this is something you'll commonly see in the game when you mine out a resource deposit. I don't know if they're just placeholder indicators for the remaining debris um, or just some kind of artifact of the graphical engine, but that's just what that is. Yeah, see, this is out of fuel, so it's, that's why it's red. Um, so now I can give it a whole bunch of carbon, and it will finish in 17 seconds. I'm just going to let it keep going. Yeah, they said they redid the clouds, too. There didn't used to be clouds that were this cool in the game. I mean, look at this sky. Look at this nighttime sky with this, like, green aurora borealis, almost. You know, the I don't know if it's the magnetic field of this planet, or if it's just because of this gaseous nebula-like thing out there in space that is coloring the sky that way. Anyway, we're going to um, put this in our exosuit. I'm going to pick this up. And now... I can build the base computer, but I am not building it here. I'm going to build it on a different planet because I don't want to build my base here. Now, it used to be a pain in the butt to, because you could only have like one base and you couldn't change them very easily and stuff. I think they made it a lot easier um, to connect bases across different worlds to maybe build more than one base. I don't know. but. One thing I do know is I am not settling on this world, so I'm leaving. I'm holding down R2 and squirt, uh, Circle to just jet out of that planet fireball as quickly as I can. And once I get into space, and by the way, there's generally like debris surrounding planets, like these little asteroids, and you can use um, your photon cannon on them to collect minerals from them so there's like silver tritium you don't necessarily always know exactly what's in them uh, but you just find out by shooting them like what's what's around here and it can be a good way to get certain things okay so here is a moon right um that's right there at least it looks like it's a moon it's tiny and it's all gray and I'm going to just poke my head around and see there is, whoa, that would be the star. I'm gonna fly a little bit more directly through this asteroid field. Generally, you can just fly through these and they don't like hurt your ship or anything, so you don't have to be worried about that. Ooh, sometimes they have like, you see these spiky purple crystals? You can hold um, L2 to slow down, by the way, with your ship and then like almost stop and go in reverse and stuff. And it allows you to get a cooler view and just, what's, what is this purple? I'm gonna hit it. It's platinum, cool. So these like, a lot of these metals and items out here, the resources sell for a whole bunch of money if you're interested in just like making cash, being a asteroid miner, you can totally do that. Wow, look how cool these things look. Anyway, um, this is Fireball right below me, right? But over here is another planet. And so I want to kind of head out a little further in this direction so I can get a good path toward that other planet. Get it in my sights. Because I don't want to get sucked into the orbit of Fireball. So I'm just going to point my ship at this other planet, and I'm going to engage my pulse drive and just drive straight at it and see what it is. 
It's an unknown moon. Oops, okay. Um, well, let's check this moon out. I thought the other one was the moon, but let's check it out. See what's on the surface here. Oh no, this is planet Yacha C10. And you can tell real quick. Okay, I'm gonna stop. What kind of world you're on? By looking around, but once you land, it will immediately like give you the stats. So I'm gonna land just to discover the planet. That's a good sign. The external temperature is 60.5 degrees. What else we got going here? It is... Oh, look at this. It's a paradise moon. This is a perfect place to build our base. It's a little purple for me, but look at all this grass. Paradise... There's like different classes or types of planets. Paradise planets are awesome. They're usually beautiful. I mean, look at this. It's lush and verdant there is you know copper right there look at this i also love being on a moon because you get this view i mean you talk about like all the unbelievably unique things that this game provides look at this view of the planet fireball from the moon it is this enormous massive ball just filling up the sky unreal all right sorry i'm just like you know gushing over what's possible in this game all right and um there's an animal there's like these purple cattails yeah this is definitely where where i'm gonna build my first base because um it's not too toxic you can see that when I'm walking around on this planet, my environmental protection doesn't even show up because um, this the temperature is perfect. All it needs is an atmosphere and oxygen, and I can just take off my helmet. But anyway, I'm so glad to have found a nice, cool planet. This this looks awesome. Look at these plants. What are these? Well, we don't know what they are. I've got to scan them and tell the universe about them. Apparently, they're tyrosium. And they give carbon and oxygen. Beautiful. As plants generally do. Okay, so I'm going to build my base someplace right around here. Not too picky. I love um, a nice view. I think this ridge over here looks amazing. Oof. Crushing my legs. Yeah, right... Actually, almost like right where my ship is. Because it's up high, and so I can look down and get a nice vista view. I could climb up that mountain, but... Um, man, look at these herds of animals just chilling. Walking along together. Um... It says dangerously hot fog, though, as the weather. It's a temperate planet. So it first said paradise moon, and now it's telling me that it's dangerously hot fog. But it's not that hot. Maybe later in the day it's going to get hot, but right now it seems fine. Anyway, let's build our base. So I'm going to build the base computer right here. Oh boy. Right there. And by the way, I love the aesthetic of all of the technology in this. You know, it's like, look at the screen on this thing. Searching cartographic archives. Universal archive search reveals no prior claim on this site. Sonar test confirms site is suitable for construction. Claim site? Claim it. So now, boom. You see little house icon that's telling me and everyone else this is my area no one can build right here except me 
People can come visit your base, for sure, but no one can build right where I am. All right, so let's use the terminal. And accessing log from previous user. Entry 4925D follows. Storms sweeping across. Static, but construction supplies low. Depositing shelter plans while need to back soon. Um, let's extract the plans. And now I can build a wooden wall with carbon. Um, so now it's telling you how to build a base. Explain. Uh, bum, 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 bum. You get all kinds of different crafting recipes. The base building in this is very much like um, Fallout 4. At least that's how it reminds me. I didn't really play Fortnite, so maybe it seems like that. I don't know. But anyway, um, at first you need carbon to build these wooden pieces, but later you can start to build like metal things. Anyway, I'm going to build this right here and then it shows you like with some snap tools that you can expand your base and I'm just gonna drop stuff down it luckily it doesn't take like too much superheated rainstorm okay well it was too good to be true that um, this planet was perfect but at the same time that's why you build a base. So you can just go inside when the weather gets rough. At first, everything is really, really simple. Um, oh, I'm out of copper. I mean, uh, carbon. I need some more carbon. So I'm just going to go to these plants right here. Uh-oh, superheated rainstorm. Oh my god, it's like fire rain. I'm getting destroyed by this rain. All right. Oh no. All right, let's just get back in our ship. I picked this planet, I was like, it's so beautiful, everything's great. Oh my God. But the cool thing is, if I don't like it here, um, I can always just build my base someplace else, move it, and it's fine. All right, so let me go into my inventory and see how much carbon I actually picked up. It doesn't look like I picked up too much. No, now I just picked up a whole bunch. Cool. I'm going to transfer some of my inventory stuff over to my starship. Like this launch stuff. Um, dehydrogen can go in the ship. Jelly can go in the ship. Navigation data can go in the ship. How's my ship looking now? Um, it's got one slot open. Oh, let's bust up these crystals. And I will put this, um, fireberry in my ship, I guess. Um, I got a bunch of dehydrogen, is what I got from those crystals. And it's telling me that my starships, the red shield sign or red armor sign means that your inventory is full. I actually like being out this. I love the sound effects of this weather. I love that they added weather effects like this. I think it's awesome. And luckily, if you're not playing in like survival or whatever, you can stay out in this for a bit. The other thing is, it doesn't wreck this planet for me because it's just a storm and they don't really last that long. You can see my environmental protection didn't even get tapped. Totally fine now. Alright, I'm going to finish these wooden walls and then um, I actually like having a base that's a little bit taller. I know there's no real need to do this, but I mean, look at this view of the planet while I'm building this base. Okay, 
You can take your time. Oop, I need some more carbon. Alright, that's the only thing about building a really big base is it blows through your carbon really fast, but that's alright. Yeah, I mean, they talked about how in the Origins patch they were making the landscapes even more varied and rich. And look at this, there's just different types of flowers and crystals. And keep in mind, this is just all procedurally generated. It's just... Fantastic. Alright. My weapon charge is depleted, so I need to recharge my mining beam. I'm going to use this phosphorus to do it. It'll clear up an inventory space. And, um, that's great. I thought I was going to have to use carbon. Unidentified plant. You want to identify things that you're going to be mining because it will allow you to harvest the secondary resource for them. At least that's how it used to be. I don't know if they changed it so you just get those anyway, but anyway. Look, plants give you a, like a bajillion carbon. You break, you know, you see that I'm getting like hundreds of carbon from some plants. So that's a really, really cool thing. Oh, there's an animal behind me. Uh-oh. He's angry. Is he bad? He didn't attack me, but... Um, his behavior is unpredictable. Anyway. My house is, like, floating off of the ledge. That's sweet. Okay. Let me then go into building by pushing up. And finish this, and then we'll just shift over and start building the roof. Once I have built the roof all the way around... Oh man, I, I was so close. I need ferrite dust. I will have a base. Well, ferrite dust is always easy to find. You just look for a rock like this. And boom. Ramon the Knight. Okay. Great. And now I can push up and finish the last piece of my base. And now um, my base is done. In that I can be in here during a storm and be completely sheltered and safe. You can always rearrange your walls, take them down, build them up however you want. I just did this to get myself a rough and ready base, and I think this makes for a great end to the episode. By the way, I love that your door is just this force field that you walk through. It's awesome. I'm turning on my flashlight as I go outside. Look at these little, like, moats of... I don't know if they're fireflies or what they are, just kind of twirling around in the night. the chillest most fun space adventure game out there all right everyone thank you so much for watching this episode we have built our first base left the initial planet gotten to a moon Ooh, let me offer food to this guy wait 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 come back oh i need pellets can i craft creature pellets um, yes, I can. You just need carbon to do that. All right. Wait, come back. Come back, dude. Where'd you go? Are you around here? I'm looking for the green dot. He's over here. Here. Uh-oh. Why can't I feed him? Sometimes they let you, sometimes they don't. I built the pellets. Come back. He doesn't want it? Come on, man. Wait, I've got food. Nah, he's too afraid. Alright, that's cool. I was going to try to ride him, but... He's terrified, so... What about this guy? Is it, Do I even know what this guy is? I do. Let me see this guy. Let me talk to him. He 
He's feeling happy because I fed him a creature pellet. And now I can just mount him. And here you go. This is me riding this animal around. Now, it's just doing its own thing. I'm not even controlling it. I'm just riding it while it moves. Um, you can suggest directions, and then you can kind of like gallop. I mean, look at this. Could this be more hysterical? It's got spikes on its back, and yet I'm riding this platypus looking creation around happily. All right. I'm gonna dismount. Awesome. All right, everybody, now I'm gonna end. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have an excellent evening or day. I hope your No Man's Sky play is going well, or I hope you're just enjoying chilling out and looking at this view of our house and our starter planet from the moon. How many games do you get to start on a planet and then build a house on its moon and have your bedtime view be that same planet? Amazing. All right, everybody. I'll check you guys in the next episode. Take care.